Have you ever listened to a song and had a boost of energy? Turns out, this is not an uncommon experience at all. Music has a great power to incite emotions for its listeners via interacting with the human brain in a unique and fascinating manner that gives meaning to our everyday experiences. You may wonder, how can the same songs cause such different reactions for certain people? While people tend to select music for a variety of reasons such as their current mood, life circumstances, external situations, or simply some personal preference. Therefore, though music is admittedly a highly personal experience, our behavioral responses to the music we like have been shown to be consistent. Our responses can range from yawning from unstimulating songs to shaking with laughter, exhibiting goosebumps, an increased heart rate, or even sexual arousal. This calls us to the question, how does music cause such an intense emotional response? Or, what specific features of music can trigger changes in our mood? The experience of listening to music is quite distinct from processing other types of sound, as the lived experiences of a listener, the vibrational properties of sound, and traditional music forms itself can all combine to impact a person's mood. Studies have consistently used the Thayer's model of mood to demystify the music to mood relationship by analyzing how a song can evoke stress and energy for listeners. Using this framework, the features of music that have been consistently incompleted to emotional experiences are intensity, pitch, timbre, and rhythm. Intensity or dynamics of a music piece refers to the song's degree of loudness or calmness of music and instruments, and these are affected by changes in amplitude of a wave. Bigger amplitudes evoke louder and more intense sounds, and was found to correlate to a high stress response in the Thayer mood model. Thus, louder songs have been shown to correlate with feelings of anger or ex excitation, while softer songs can evoke a mellow response of one of sadness or fear. On a sound wave, the frequency of vibration relates to pitch, the relative lowness or highness of a singer's voice or instrument. The greater the number of vibrations per second in a song, the higher the pitch, while the lower the number of vibrations, the lower the pitch. While a high pitch correlates with a lighter, carefree attitude, a lower pitch is biology ingrained to imply a darker, sad, or serious tone. Tombra, or the harmonic profile of a song, refers to the unique quality of a sound source. Harmonics give instruments their individual sounds, allowing us to identify different instruments even when they are playing the same note. Musical pieces that incorporate all instruments to have a low or dark timbre follow more simple harmonic profiles, thus the frequency causes soothing and calming effects. As sound prof profiles become more quantized or complex, higher timbre or higher energy wave profiles thus have the opposite effect, a less soothing or calming effect. In musical pieces, Rhythm refers to the pattern of sounds and silences that we hear per unit of time. The repetition, periodicity, or frequency of sound wave units thus help determine the rhythm of the song, where repeated beats and overall pace or temp of the song impact one's mood. The tempo or beats per minute of a song indicate the faster tempos are associated with high energy songs and slower tempos with lower energy, perhaps sadder songs. Building from the features of music, songs can create powerful musical events to affect mood on a higher level. For instance, any unexpected change in the song structure or particular acoustic features, whether it be in pitch, timbre, loudness, or rhythm, can trigger an arousal response. Often music exploits this human reaction by using extended anticipation and violating a listener's expectations of a musical piece in order to elicit or intensify the emotional response experienced. Thus, songs that impact our mood often use musical techniques to create motifs or themes that we associate with the lyrics of the song. The experience of these arousal responses has much to do with the biological workings of our brains. For example, our prefrontal cortex creates expectations when listening to a song, building on our anticipation and analysis of lyrics. Lyrics and melodies that stick with us are stored in the hippocampus of the brain and are often drawn upon as we navigate our relevant interactions. The music that has a significant impact will trigger feelings or changes in our mood through the interaction of memory processes and emotional responses of the nucleus accumbens and the amygdala, parts of the hippocampus. 
You may be wondering, how exactly can the brain detect sounds? Sound is primarily detected by the auditory cortex in the ear, which are able to sort, process, and interpret sound. Sound waves are sent to the middle ear and inner ear and reach the nerve endings. These nerve endings transform the sound vibrations into electrical impulses and travel along nerves. Along these nerves, sound information is transported to many areas of the brain, like the thalamus and the temporal lobe, to be processed. These areas of the brain are responsible for different components of sound. The intensity of sound, or attenuation, is processed by neurons that fire signals at different rates based on sound intensity. The motor cortex in the, and cerebellum are responsible for distinguishing the rhythm of the music. And the auditory cortex, such as the cerebellum and the prefrontal cortex, can contribute to your understanding of pitch and tone, which helps the brain analyze a song's melody or harmony. So let's take this information to an interesting concept. Why do we like listening to sad music? Well, let's listen to a clip and analyze it. After listening to that song, I would like to bring your attention to a few song elements. This song has a slow tempo and lower pitch. Reminder, the speed or rate at which a passive music is played is its tempo, while rhythm is the patterns of these sounds in time. The combination of a slower tempo and lower pitch has been shown to elicit common feelings of sadness along with low energy. So to come back to the question, sad songs may feel pleasant if we're already in a sad mood due to the mood congruency effect. So in other words, misery likes company. It allows experiencing negative feelings in a safe environment without the anxiety or sadness elicited under everyday circumstances. For example, the sadness felt when receiving a bad test grade is unpleasant because it is inconsistent with one's achievement goals, whereas sadness that is evoked by listening to this song by Benny Golson is not unpleasant because the song is goal irrelevant. However, some may not have felt this feeling of sadness but instead felt content, relaxed, or even happy. This is completely normal as musical experience is unique for each individual. It not only depends on the physical attributes of music, such as the tempo, pitch, etc., but is also dependent on the perception of it, which involves the context of mood in which the music is being listened to, as well the memories being triggered or associated with the song, as well as the individual preference of each listener also matters each time you listen to a song. Now you can appreciate your favorite song in a brighter context. The combined effect of the musical experience, your background and elements of music themselves, gives you a unique impact on how your brain perceives your favorite song. Now ask yourself, which music energizes you or lifts your mood? Anyways, thank you for listening and happy listening. However, some might not have felt this feeling of sadness, but instead felt content, relaxed, or even happy. This is completely normal as musical experience is unique for each individual. It not only depends on the physical attributes of music, such as the tempo, pitch, etc., but is also dependent on the perception of it, which involves the context of our mood, in which music is being listened to, the memories triggered or associated with the song, as well as the individual preference of each listener also matters each time you listen to a song. Now you can appreciate your song in a brighter context. The combined effect of the musical experience, your background, and the elements of music themselves gives a unique impact on how your brain perceives your favorite song. Now ask yourself, which music energizes you or lifts your mute? Thank you for listening, and happy listening.